Welcome back to Sculpt Skin. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an update. Today, we're going to get a bit scientific as we explore the mechanics of ultrasonic cavitation. We touched on what it is in a previous video, and now we're diving deeper into how it actually works. As a quick recap, ultrasonic cavitation is a phenomenon where high-frequency sound waves create tiny bubbles in a liquid. These bubbles then collapse, releasing a burst of energy. But how does this all happen? Let's break it down. First, let's talk about the ultrasonic waves. These are sound waves that have frequencies higher than the upper limit of human hearing. They're generated by a device called an ultrasonic transducer. The ultrasonic transducer converts electrical energy into mechanical vibrations, which then produce the ultrasonic waves. These waves travel through the liquid, creating areas of high and low pressure. Now, here's where the magic happens. In the low pressure areas, tiny bubbles form. These are called cavitation bubbles. These bubbles aren't filled with air, they're actually filled with vapor from the liquid itself. And because they're unstable, they don't last very long. As the pressure normalizes, these bubbles experience a sudden increase in pressure and temperature. This causes them to collapse, or implode, in a fraction of a second. When these bubbles implode, they release energy in the form of heat and shock waves. This energy can be powerful enough to break apart substances like dirt, grease, or even biological tissue. The implications of this are huge. From cleaning to medicine, the applications are vast and varied. So that's the science behind ultrasonic cavitation. It's a fascinating blend of physics, engineering, and real-world applications. If you enjoyed this deep dive, give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who loves science as much as you do. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting content. Have a question or a topic you'd like me to cover? Drop it in the comments below. Now, let's mention ultrasonic cavitation versus traditional methods. Let's start with cleaning. Traditional methods often involve scrubbing, chemicals, or high-pressure water jets. But how does ultrasonic cavitation stack up? Ultrasonic cavitation can clean intricate parts and hard-to-reach areas more effectively. It's also eco-friendly, as it often requires fewer chemicals. However, it may not be as effective for larger, less delicate items. Moving on to medicine. Traditional methods for breaking down kidney stones, for example, might involve surgery or shockwave lithotripsy. How does ultrasonic cavitation compare? Ultrasonic cavitation is less invasive and can be more precise, targeting only the affected area. However, it's still a developing field and may not replace traditional methods entirely. Lastly, let's talk about body contouring. Traditional methods like liposuction are invasive and require recovery time. What about ultrasonic cavitation? Ultrasonic cavitation offers a non-invasive alternative for fat reduction and skin tightening. However, the results are generally more subtle and may require multiple sessions. So, is ultrasonic cavitation better than traditional methods? Well, it depends on the application and what you're looking to achieve. It offers precision and is often less invasive but is still an evolving technology. That's it for today's comparison. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Got questions or topics you'd like me to cover? Drop them in the comments below.